Hey guys, welcome to the Ether Hub. Today, me and Mike are sitting down and playing some Arena. But in order to actually play Arena effectively, we have to open packs. Yeah, when you know what, you have to spend some a little bit of money and resources to get the cards you need to make decks. But we're gonna put in a lot of resources today for the channel, so we can get make some pretty interesting decks for you guys, maybe. And we're gonna get 90 packs of M19 to open for you guys. Hopefully, we get some good stuff. Yep, it should be a good time. So just kick back and see what we open. And you right. know what? We're gonna we're gonna crack some jokes while we're doing it. Look at that. Uh, look at all of these gems just about to turn into packs. There That's, we go. If you guys if you guys missed it, that was real life money being converted into pixels. Don't remind me, please. All right. So. Are we doing pack at a time? I think we start with pack at a time, then we can. Yeah, we're gonna we're probably gonna pick it up a little bit because ninety packs is a lot of packs to go through. Uh, so we'll, we'll just we'll start off slow and we'll ramp up as we go. Sounds good. But if you guys can see at the top right corner there, that's the new radial ticker for opening packs to get your rewards of rare and uncommon wild cards. If you guys don't know, the vault's gone. It's out of here. So every pack you open puts you one tick closer to getting a rare wild card. Uh, it essentially puts you at the same amount you would get at the, the level the vault would give you, but it gives you, you know, a visual reminder, or a visual reward for opening packs, which is kind of what felt made the vault feel so nasty that you had to wait. But now while you're opening packs, you get those rare wild cards as you go. So it gives you a little bit of incentive. Yeah, basically the math still all works out the same. You're still going to get the same number of wild cards, but at least you get them... Uh, quicker than you did before where you had to wait and fill the vault which could take forever exactly. depending on yeah. you know how many duplicates you open or quintuplet wait quintuplets what's five sextuplets <laughs> sextuplet sink, cards sink, you open sink, sink tuplets yeah something like sure, that let's go with that <laughs> all right <laughs> correct us in the comments okay well nothing too crazy in the commons and uncommons although yeah Although it is funny that you have to collect four uh, Colossal Dread Malls of oh, the M19 variety before you can start dusting them, but... <laughs> well, not anymore, because... Well, dust doesn't... Okay, the, correct me if I'm wrong. The vault's dust, gone. The, yeah, but does dust exist, though? Because I heard varying like, sources that like the vault technically exists, it just won't ever open because you have to dust a million cards. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, there's no uh, vault chest anymore. Up in the yeah, top, right? I know, which is, was also conflicting to when I saw people talking about that. So never mind, forget it. They yeah. need to figure out what to do with with fifth copies of cards. As far as a limited pack, uh, Herald of Faith is a pretty decent bomb. I mean, a four three for so. five is always a good rate for a flyer, and it enables your life gain decks. So pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, a hey. wild card. So that's actually really funny that we got that on the first pack because because opening packs gets you closer to wild cards. They've actually reduced the number of rare and wild, uh, well, wild cards in general that you'll naturally find in packs. So having a rare wild card open up in the first pack is really unlikely. Yep. It's... But still, best best card in the set. Yeah, just insert on that wild card, whatever you think the best rare is, and we just got it, which is the upside yep. to Arena. Uh, if you just forget about all the downsides for a second. <laughs> <laughs> And another Herald of Faith. We got a the best uncommon in the set. Oh, look at it! It's so yeah. good. The best uncommon. Uh, I'm still shocked that you're getting those. Anyway, Izareth. That's a pretty cool card. Yeah, I really like. I really like her design a lot. Yeah, like Nicole is. Uh, Nicole is a big Tiny Leaders fan, and that seems like a pretty sweet card for Tiny Leaders. Yep. There you go. You got your rare wild card. And I got my horse. Oh yeah. Yep, five color horse deck. Let's go. Yeah, if you guys want to keep rolling tonight after the pack openings, I might definitely try to make the horse deck because that has basically been my dream since they announced that there was a horse cycle. Are you going to put in that sun crested mare? Oh, yeah, definitely. Whew. Oh, oh my god, what is this? Like, did they actually change the change the numbers yet? Well, you know what this is, Simon. When you're streaming with me, I get all the best stuff. Uh, apparently, look, this, this has to be a thing now. Every time you want to open a pack, you have to call me and I'll hop on. This is insane. Arena just wants to make you jealous vicariously through watching me open packs. Yeah, I did it with Karn and I hated yep. it. For that, so. <laughs> now I'm going to get four Man. nickel boluses. 
Oh, there's Lightning Mayor. All right, chat, you keep track. Um, we need a Nickel Bolas tracker. Apparently, we're going to get more than one. Uh, this card doesn't seem great. I mean, I mean, if you see token decks push through the, you know, Goblin Chain Whirler Storm, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, this ne it's, you're never going to see this, like, because Cha Goblin Chain Whirler is a thing. So I, I don't know why you would any ever have that plus Amulet of Safekeeping. Yeah, it does seem silly. Okay. And they have the Black Mare that also does the same thing, so. Yep. Psychic Corrosion is just like my least favorite card in the set because of Mill. Mill is just dumb, and it's actually very viable in uh, draft for the most part. So you're saying it's, it's viable and limited, but it's just not going to be a standard thing? Probably not, because you do have things like Thrashing Bronodon and uh, uh, Reclamation Sage now that uh, take care of enchantments pretty easily. Like, there's yeah. certain matchups where Mill could definitely be a thing, but... Although... Oh, I'm having devious control thoughts. I'm just gonna ignore it. Oh, I forgot Bone. Yeah, Bone Dragon. Yeah, he was a I mythic. Mean, it's, a, it's, it's a mythic, but it doesn't feel like a mythic, so it's kind of like a eh. Although it is a skeleton, it goes with um the skeleton lord. I forgot its name. That's also an M19. Yeah, this thing has been surprisingly good in a limited the bookcase. I mean, because, yeah, it's kind of sucks playing walls sometimes, but, you know, yeah. four defense is not bad for two two mana. And I mean, then, it's a good it's a good early defender, and it does it does provide you something in the late game. Yeah. Which is rare. It's very rare for defenders or early drop walls, so. Yep. Um, well, <laughs> zero nickel bolus is so far, dude. Yeah, as far as I can tell, Frustrated Dorito, also awesome name. Uh, I think the wild card symbol is probably supposed to be, you know, a lotus of some kind. They're pretty yeah. iconic in Magic. I'm surprised uh, that they, they just didn't slap the Planeswalker symbol in the back of them. Oh, it is. It's there. It's in the center. Oh, it is. What? Oh, wow, it is. Look at that. They're merging old and new. All right, isolate. Eh. Yeah. There's fringe playability in, uh, in Legacy with this card, but... Not super okay, when likely. You, when you start a sentence with fringed and legacy, yeah. <laughs> you know it's not going to be a good card. No, it is a good card. Is Angel of the Dawn and Limited. That thing is just oh, yeah. very highly pickable. And oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a great top end for a limited deck. Even uh, Electrify is and Arcane Encyclopedia is a great one of if you're playing the uh, the mill deck or you know even just a slower you know value deck. It's uh, really great to get you through some rough draws in the mid game. Yeah, and look, uh, Peter seventeen. He's lost a suspicious bookcase, so he can confirm. Oh yeah, I definitely have two. I love the uh, Theros divination art. It's so good. Mm. Yeah. Hey, oh. spirit deck coming in. Uh, not right now. <laughs> Standard really I'll doesn't have you. a whole lot of spirits at the moment, but like modern uh, no, is actually I agree. this. I agree one hundred percent, but. You know what does have a lot of spirits? Ravnica. Oh, yeah, possibly. As a plane, Ravnica does have a lot, have a has a good amount of spirits uh, that can be in it. So, at yeah. least historically, it's had spirit cards. So. Yeah. I haven't got to test much with Fountain of Renewal, but I think it's possibly playable and limited uh, if you have the life gain deck. Like only if you have like enough Johnny Primates and uh, and the uh, white black vampire yeah uh, but i mean it is it is a really really decent card if you have even a couple of those drops and those are common so it's not out of the realm of possibility well i think what makes it playable is the fact that you can sack it later to draw a card yeah, it, it does it has it has actual use later yeah a lot of cards that replace themselves just make up for the you know, other downsides pretty well because they can go somewhere else oh we got the victus says Madi, the dire well, that's uh, Elder Dragon. It's definitely not the best Elder Dragon, but it is an Elder Dragon. Yep. Um, I could see if Singleton starts taking off on Arena. That might be a viable one. Hopefully um, they make that a format that just stays around and isn't like an event thing. Oh, I don't know why they wouldn't. Like, I don't know it makes so much maybe sense. They just, maybe they were just testing it. Anyway, if you're a man who loves to gamble, the Victus is your boy. Yep, it certainly is. Um, let's go to the next pack. 
All right, gutter snipe. Spell look at that! You already got another another rare wild card just from your radial tick, uh, ticker. Yep, got a few. Hey, okay, oh, selfless know. champion. Yeah, she seems like she's a little overcosted for what the knight's deck wants to do, because yeah, she's I mean, just such a high like like the knight's deck is pretty low to the ground. Um, yeah. But even with even yeah. with the new knight synergistic cards that came out in m19 i'm still not convinced that it's going to be uh as potent of a deck as other tribes are going to be i think yeah i have to agree with that one all right Whoa. departed deck can is pretty sweet there's well, one of your top picks for limited yeah one of your few other spirits in the set yeah. Um, and this one is actually <laughs> possible for uh, modern play as well in the modern spirits deck uh, because of the unblockable uh, clause on there. Omniscience. Well, I've gotten a lot of mythics so far, haven't we? You have. Uh, out of what, you've gotten 10 packs open? What is that? Including the wild card? Yeah, is the Victus. Three mythics? Four mythics. Omniscience. Bone Dragon. Bone Dragon, yeah. Oh yeah, it's like four mythics out of ten packs. That's a pretty good rate. <laughs> definitely yeah. would not see that in a normal paper box. It definitely wouldn't see it if I wasn't here watching it and suffering mm -hmm. because of it. So, Dism dismissive pyromancer, amazing wizard. Yeah, definitely, and one of the better arts in the set, in my opinion. <laughs> I love the. Uh, yeah, it's actually a uh, self-insert from the artist. That really looks very, very much like Brahm sells the uh, the artist. Hey, that's awesome! If people are gonna people are gonna play with you, right? Might as well be on a magic card. <laughs> yeah, and that's definitely a limited all star and a half. It just does so oh, much for absolutely. you. absolutely. Maybe good in the wizard deck. I'm not sure. I haven't really played with it past the uh, Dominaria. So. Yep. Um, Save I mean, it it's enchanted. a drop wizard. That does stuff. Oh. So. Oh yeah, that's it's bear with upside is always getting limited. Um, yeah. Don't know if you could see any constructed play unless we had another set with Madness. If we had a Madness set. Oh, yeah, he'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> because, you know, everything on that card just really does yeah. well. And, uh, like, even the sacrificing himself to deal four damage is super relevant. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, outside of it being a wizard, it looks like this card was designed strongly for, like, limited play. Yeah. On the other hand, Seder Enchanter just hasn't paid off for me at all. Like, I want to make the enchantment deck work, but it's just too slow. And, like, th it like is. three mana for a 2-2, two -two, and it's a dual, you know, cost card that's just, eh. Like, it's got really high upside if you had, like, enough enchantments, but I never find that I can get quite enough enchantments. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree, first off. Like, flavor text on arena cards should definitely be a thing. Yeah, that's really disappointing that they don't have that input. Yeah. I understand that they're. I understand they're trying to conserve space and make sure the text is as big as possible for people to read. But with the scroll down feature that they already have on cards, there's no harm in just sticking it on the bottom. Yeah. If people they, want to read it, they can scroll down on the text box. Honestly, what they could do is just when you hover over it, uh, the card should just oh, expand, right. like to yeah, have all oh, the text. Right. Like Dang. keep it the normal size when it's on the playing field or even in this view. Yeah. But then as soon as you hover over it, it should just, you know naturally expand or something to yeah. show the flavor text and the full rules text at a good I mean, look, font size look, look at fire elemental his box is dead empty yeah but, and you know there's flavor text there on a normal card yeah of course they would never print a card that looked like that who knows that maybe they're working on it you know it, um, i'd hope so at least hungry and hydra uh, i've never been a huge fan of hydras they all work the same way basically and it's just like eh. i mean this can certainly steal a game you know for sure course, but yeah um it's just the hydras have never been like my jam i've never seen a hydra it was just like hey it's amazing and it is actually a a, a really great card against walking ballista uh -huh. because the way it works it'll always get more counters than the ballista can deal damage to it yeah because you deal so if you ever find yourself in a titanic duel between hydra and ballista yep all right let's go to the next pack Sorry, I'm over on the side here trying to sneak a Twitter <laughs> or tweet because I forgot to do that before starting. Poison Tip Archer. People oh. want to put that in a black green elf deck. Don't think it's working, so. Uh, it's just too expensive, in my opinion. Like, yeah. 
and I just don't know that black green elves is a thing in standard right now. Like maybe no, it will uh, be in Ravnica because we'll get some yeah. Golgari, you know, good stuff to throw in with it. And there could be a uh, aristocrats deck that needs this guy. Oh, I 100% uh, agree. But typically you want an aristocrat that's really cheap um, to play because you want a really low curve in an aristocrat deck a lot of times because you're just making a bunch of tokens. Mm -hmm. So being four mana is kind of rough, but the two, three bodies, not the worst, but, you know, and Death eh. Touch helps, and the Reach helps too, but right now you've got, uh, um, the, you know, the big dragon that can exert to deal four damage, which happens to be more than his defense. Uh, Glorybringer. Yeah, yeah Glorybringer yeah. just takes him out without him even getting to Death Touch him, so... Uh, but shield mirror is, not, is nice oh it's incredible <laughs> like yeah. this this is the card that makes horses viable whatsoever like honestly the the real horse tribal build is probably just black white maybe green like or maybe mm -hmm. abzan colors obviously i'm going to try to make it work five colors but uh yeah. this, this thing is, makes the dream work because gets you the three life which triggers on sun mare um can't be blocked by red creatures which you know with red being pretty rampant in the format right now it's great and the life gain is not anything to sneeze at because you're going to get six life pretty much no matter what, uh, which is yeah. a really big swing against a aggro deck because it lets you stabilize uh, before dying. Uh, sun Cleanser. Had you come out like a year ago, you might have been good. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of text. I don't even remember what this card does, but... It can I, remove I, all I, the oh. counters from a permanent oh. or a player. Um, okay, I mean, that's... That includes... Planeswalkers, right? Uh, can't. Counters. All counters from target creature. Uh, or target opponent loses all counters. That player can't get counters. So basically, so it specifically it can, avoids Planeswalkers, I see. Yeah. It can basically uh, remove energy from somebody. Or it can remove... 1-1 um, one, one counters. Just counter, yeah, 1-1 one, one counters from a creature. You know, if, if this card was... If it targeted any permanent... Or, yeah, anything, like any target, it would be obviously insane to kill a Planeswalker. Yeah, that, that would be awesome, but... No, but I, love the quite I, love, I love the Ixalan art. I, I love... I'm actually in love with this core set because it, it is pulling so much art from different planes. I love it. Yeah, no, that's definitely a big plus. Another Lightning Mirror. Also one of the better horses. Um, yeah. Although, eh, like, <clears throat> I would probably have it sighted out because of Chain Whirler. <laughs> it just kind of gets punked. Oh, yeah. there's another Smith's Pyromancer. Well, we're going to get some doubles in 90 packs, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Lots. <laughs> lots and lots. <laughs> oh. Draconic Magistrate Disciple. Scepter. This one's... That's an interesting card. Yeah. Uh, it kind of worries me. There's so many extra turn spells right now that, like... Yeah. You'd almost but, I mean, play standard I, I, taking turns, but it, like it's still going to be a really high setup to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I still, have you ever seen someone take an extra turn in any standard match yet? Um, no, not. I mean, I haven't played standard yet, but I haven't yeah. heard of any like you know crazy decks so far that have used extra turns. Oh, play hey. more. We're so getting that, that cycle of elder dragons. So I think this one's actually better than I gave it credit for um like being able to stick a 6-6 six, six threat that can't immediately be removed um is actually pretty decent it's not good against control yeah. decks necessarily um i mean it guarantees you six damage but dealing six damage for six mana is not good but yeah. um the fact that it makes them leave up mana to because they have to take care of on your take care of it on your turn because it can't be uh, you know, it has hexproof, you know, until it deals damage. So, mm -hmm. um, that may, basically that just makes your opponent play out of turn. Like they're not gonna um, use their mana efficiently because they have to hold up mana for Raska's contempt or murder or something like that uh, something to take new. care of it. So, uh, so you, you know, oftentimes, oftentimes they'll lose a creature to it too. So it's not awful. Yep. And a uh, siege breaker giant. That thing is just disgusting and limited. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, six power, three toughness isn't great because there is lightning strike, things like that, but, you know, unlimited removal's at a premium, so 
he can stick yeah. this thing and then you can pay that four mana so that something can't block and it's still got trample so it'll get damage through even if you can you know, cast combat trick mm -hmm. pretty sweet also militia bugler is really it's great also really yeah because they're especially if you can put together the red white aggressive deck is probably the best uh, uh one of the best decks right now in limited um uh, you know until people adapt a little bit right Another deck can uh, take vengeance is pretty good. It's not as good no, as you'd hope because there's a lot of vigilance in this set, uh, so things aren't is, quite it's as funny. Awful. It's funny to think that we're we're looking at a, a, a two mana destroy target tap creature spell like at sorcery speed and saying, well, you know, there's a lot of vigilance here. Yeah, it just makes it only okay. Where whereas in some sets yeah. it would be amazing, and obviously at instant speed it would be too good <laughs> but um yeah um pegasus courser is just as good or actually probably better than it was in dominaria uh -huh. um, a lot of games end with flyers right now so uh this one's an interesting card um eh, it's pretty, I'm always go ahead i was gonna say it's pretty highly pickable because it's just always going to be whatever the best creature on the battlefield is and obviously yeah. you have to enchant it onto something, but you know, you can put it on anything, even like a little one, one token. Um, yeah. So, uh, I love it because it is so cheap for, for the effect that you get out of it. The problem is like, whenever I look at this card, I'm going to first pick it probably not, like if I get it in a pack. Um, but there's, it's just one of those cards that has a high, high ceiling and then a really low floor sometimes it's going to be a dead card in your hand forever others it's well not a dead card but not a good card uh but or that you have those one times other times where you play it on a, what, an amazing creature on the field it just depends on what the what the, what the board state looks like oh definitely know? yeah i just i don't like cards that like are so dependent on the board state for them to be good personally that's just my like ideology yeah, definitely agree. And it's an enchantment, so you can get blown out if they destroy the creature you're trying to enchant. Yeah. So, uh, Scholar of the Stars is pretty great. Um, thanks to the Thopter Maker, that three drop uh -huh. common that uh, makes Thopter. I think it's like Pioneer, Aviary, Aviary Pioneer or something. Um, yeah. I mean, this curves perfectly into it, and you get to draw a card, which is, you know, three yeah. best words in magic draw a card. Exactly. <laughs> draw a card. It's so good. Uh, John is last day, I know. So I tried to do the mental mathematics on this to see if it would be any good in limited. I really just don't think it is. Um, like, it's one of those things where it gives your opponent too much control over whether or not this gets activated. Because obviously getting a 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 sounds great. But your yep. opponent can play around it and just try not to remove your creatures. Um, obviously there's going to be plenty of board states where they have to kill something, you know, in order to get through. But, like, any time you give your opponent a choice, that just does not, you know, doesn't work out very well for you. Um, and there yeah, is... It's just... Good. I was going to say, there is discard, but not a lot. And I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of people taking it, so... Uh, well, just because I play discard, uh, like, hand manipulation and discard in standard doesn't mean it's very common. I'll tell you guys that right now. But... I, the, still, at the end of the day, I mean, this is like a conditional 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 mana. It's just... I don't know. I just don't... It, it just seems like a sideboard card. Like, if you pick this up, you know, just because somebody else passed it a couple of packs down, then, yeah, it might beat out some, you know, Dinky Common or something that you're looking at. But I would probably only sideboard it in if they are playing enough discard to make the first clause uh, yeah. work. That's definitely where you get the most bang for your buck. Also, art-wise, I love the colors in this thing, and uh, oh man, I love I love the story significance of it. Oh yeah, it's such good flavor too because Nickel Bolas, uh, when he enters the battlefield, makes you discard a card. So although you... technical flavor fail because Johnny's last stand was against Nickel Bolas Planeswalker proper. Uh, just saying. Oh yeah, um, but it's pretty cool that the four four angel lines up like mechanically it's got good flavor because nickel bolus makes you discard he's a four four yeah. and you get to play a four four angel to block him down and four yeah. four 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 avatar yeah white avatar you're right yep 
Because that's how he killed Nicol Bolas. Well, defeated Nicol Bolas the first time was he siphoned his energy and made an avatar of Nicol Bolas himself to fight himself. <laughs> uh, Gargoyle Sentinel has been in... There's There's been a bunch of Gargoyles. They're never that good. They're like a really bad filler card that you're just like, I guess I'll take it because I need it. <laughs> and funny and funny thing is he's actually awful. Well, he's not awful. He's just not as good with um, Arcady Sabbath because he already has power equal to his toughness. It still draws a card when you play him, which, which is amazing, of course. But it's just like one of those defenders that aren't amazing with Arcades, which is funny. Yeah, and I mean, you might play him if you are playing Arcades just because it, the mana cost for Arcades is I mean, so, yeah. you know, so rough and limited, especially like that. Yeah. You know that you can at least drop this 3-3 three, three that'll at least trade you know, or something if you needed to. Exactly. Rabbit and I mean, still 3-3 three, three, oh. three, draw a card if you have Arcades out, so I mean, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it would definitely go in that deck if you're really trying to force Arcades in a draft, but yeah, Rabid Bite's incredible. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just the the best green removal I think that's been printed in recent years. Uh, and there's yeah. the basilisk in the set with the basilisk on the board. This is a kill spell because of the death uh, touch. Yeah, I was about to say death touch. Yep. Yeah, um, rabid bite is definitely better than your like traditional fight card. Yep. Uh, anticipates okay. It's just kind of a filler. Like I'd almost always rather play divination. Yeah. Um, it can be a little more effective and constructive, but right now we have Opt, which is better, and even Opt doesn't see play in standard, so... Yeah. <laughs> eh. But this does have a really great uh, combination with uh, Dark Dweller Oracle, because mm -hmm. uh, you can get that scry, uh, you know, to place something on top of your library to then, uh, you know, grab with uh, Dark Dweller Oracle, so... Yeah. Oh, Cleansing Nova. Cleansing Nova. Okay, now that's a, now that's a card. Yeah, I still think this is going to be the board wipe uh, for white going forward because of that modality. Um, yep. I just don't think the life gain on Fumigate's really worth the uh, giving up the ability to destroy artifact or enchantments because there's a lot of really great enchantments right now. And a lot of yeah, uh, white's removal is all enchantment based. So It's just so funny because white has so many board wipes right now. Like, they just keep getting board wipes. Yep. Oh, thanks for so following great. Scotty Good. Uh, oh, and hey, Daddy Good, he's, that's my IRL friend in real life. Oh, cool. And uh, K Wheels, thanks for joining us. And uh, let's see, Frustrated Dorito says, Do you enter the battlefield triggers still work with metamorphic alteration? They would. Yeah. Uh, because technically, uh, when the you transform something, field. it's uh, still creating an instance of that creature and it's entering the battlefield. Uh, enter the battlefield doesn't necessarily mean. Like it came from your hand, it just means that it has appeared on the battlefield, and that's when that that type of trigger triggers. So the same can be said with anything that generates tokens. Those tokens enter the battlefield. Yep. All right, we're twenty packs in, and no, still no Nicol Bolas. Um, or planeswalkers, and there's a lot of planeswalkers here to to potentially get. Oh yeah, there are. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, there's five of them. Maybe my luck's not so great. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, great hey, Grand Marshall. Great Grand Marshall. That's, hey, he's in a deck. He's going to be in, a, in the zombie deck, so. Yeah, whether or not the zombie deck is any good. Uh, That's a different discussion. Yeah. But he's definitely going in it. I just don't think it's the zombie deck's going to be anywhere near as good as it was in Eldritch Moon. Like, Eldritch it, Moon just had Crypt Breaker, which is amazing. <laughs> Crypt Breaker yeah, is I, awesome. I, I agree with you 100%, but as a tribe, I think it, it, it's very possible for it to stand on its own. You know, and don't and uh, M19 standard. Yeah. Oh, thanks for following. Uh, stupid nub one two three. Um, Remo eight eleven asked, does uh, white control that play cast out and seal away really want to play cleansing Nova? And uh, the answer is yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because in the mirror match, you do want the ability to take out enchantments. But if you're playing a lot of your own enchantment removal, you just play the kill all creatures uh, clause instead. And it's the same reason why you'll see people with um, Settle the Wreckage or, or Fumigates uh, playing those types of cards, though. So. Well, he's saying if all of your removal is enchantments, oh. do you really want it? And I, and I think the upside is just too good to pass that up. The other thing is that uh, Esper is actually the preferred control deck right now. Um, and Esper plays mostly instant speed removal, so you don't run into the problem of 
destroying your own enchantments. Uh, and it gives you some uh, ways to get your like Scarab Gods and things back and your Planeswalkers back from castouts from a blue-white control deck uh, or another white deck that's using Sealways and castouts. So because uh, Esper Control is using Rass's Contempt, because Rass's Contempt is way better than uh, Cast mm -hmm. Out. Um, Absolutely. And the and Esper deck actually had a problem dealing with enchantments sometimes, but now it's got that, you know, um, in the board wipe slot, so pretty decent upgrade in my opinion. Yeah, life gain can definitely be valuable, but uh, Trillix Q, uh, but Esper deck doesn't have that as much of a problem there because it's playing things like Rask's Contempt that are already gaining at life, so Fumigate just feels like a little bit, you know, um, of a downgrade, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're right though, Blue-White might stick with Fumigate, it's gonna be kind of a toss-up. I could even see playing one of each, like one in the sideboard, one one in the main or something. Probably yeah, I, 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 can see your, I can see your point with uh, just having the... Uh... The ability to do something else with your void wave if you need it it just just giving it that uh that little extra and it, it jumps the value of the card up oh for sure uh thanks for following workman 2314 and howdy to you too all right diagraph cool important for the zombie deck just a one yep. One drop, two, two. Can't ever be too unhappy with that. I mean, it comes into play tap, but you're the aggressive deck, so you don't care about blocking. Mm hmm. Bogger Brute. I just always love the <laughs> the buff goblins in that. <laughs> just cracked me up. Shoot, that art from Magic Origins, though. Loved yep. it. Uh, Gear Per Guide's actually done some work in Limited. I mean, just making something unblockable by two, you know, creatures of power two or less. There's a hey, lot. Of... into the Steel Leaf Champion. Yeah, there's a lot of creatures with power two or less that you don't want blocking, including mm -hmm. Doom Dissenter, <laughs> because you don't want yeah. that to block, you know, and just generate a two-two token. So, a lot of a lot of creatures with Death Touch. Ooh, wow. Atlas, nice. The Dragon Queen herself. Um, this card feels like it could have been pushed to Mythic, honestly. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, it's like Mythic quality of, of a card, especially with Dragon Tribal. Yeah, being an actual thing. I mean, the six six for six is already incredible, especially in limited. Um, yeah, in limited, obviously a huge all star. Yeah, listening to limited resources, they were arguing that demanding dragon is actually better. It's a five five for five, just because in limited you're never sure if you're going to be able to hit that six mana, and the games you know are just a little clunkier. But I would say yeah. in like constructed, she's definitely better than demanding dragon just because of all the synergy going oh. on. By far, by far, it's just oh my god, yeah, dragon, it's just the 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 concept of of a dragon deck, although it's so expensive, not only in the quality of cards that you need, but in pure mana cost. God, it seems like a lot of fun. Oh, definitely, and the uh, fire breathing for the whole team. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's obviously insane. Yeah, and obviously the tokens just get out of control. Like if you could pick up Lathless and a dragon egg in limited better your opponents better watch out that's just insane because you get two dragons yeah. off dragon egg which gets you two tokens like holy crap this <laughs> is yep. crazy hey boy grave digger grave digger i actually haven't seen him in any packs yet when i've and i've done well i've only done two drafts but yeah i haven't seen yeah, him i mean it's a ones. good it's a good limited card oh yeah it's one of the best um yeah it's a solid staple it's been in magic for years yeah, this gets your best creature back, you know, after they throw their removal at it, so. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Gage says it's Dampy from uh, Zelda. <laughs> Pretty much. That's a ultra buff Dampy, though. Look at those biceps. He's definitely been a... Uh... <laughs> He's just holding that guy and saying, Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. Oh. Wind Raider Sphinx. Man. I can so, see an interesting I mean, deck with you know, this. You know, I, I've been playing with a blue mono, uh, like, fire, Flyers deck for a while. But I treat that more of, like, an aggressive deck. It's obviously, like, I, I've built it to be super aggressive. And I just don't think I I would put, uh, you know, this huge card in that. Even though it obviously has a great top, uh, like, it has a good ceiling. Oh, it obviously yeah. gives you a lot. Yeah. 
you'd have to definitely build around that card and like make it more of a mid-range version of it but yeah I, I don't know how viable that is because there's so many better cards that mana cost so right but i can see that being a mono blue mid-range flyer deck maybe you know maybe kind of more of a controlling one i don't know yeah uh psychic symbiont is awesome i love that card i love the art of the card it's amazing it's kind of like dinrova horror but not nearly as broken <laughs> um no name end all thanks for following man oh yeah thanks for the follow all right let's see what we got oh banefire so this is part of the reason i don't want to play control anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's gonna close out a lot of games against control with red because you just it's uncounterable yeah <laughs> like, oh i hate that hate that so so much but then again maybe it's time to put an end to all these just shitty teferi decks that <laughs> just can't even yeah end. they really don't want to they don't want to see those hour-long mirror matches anymore i don't think no i don't <laughs> they literally bleed viewers i think yeah that was a good reprint if that's the goal. Oh, Volcanic Dragon, nice. Always oh, solid, yep. Solid limited pick. Uh, the Minotaur is not the worst. I mean, 3-3 three, three Haste is okay. Goblin Instigator is pretty good. Um, yeah, if you have the Goblin payoffs, that is. I mean, otherwise, it's just a kind of a hordling outburst, but not quite as good. <laughs> um, Sky Merch Bloodletter, always a role player in the life gain deck. Um, yeah. It was pretty decent in Ixalan. It's pretty yeah, good here. It's Yeah, it was a very, very uh, serviceable common in Ixalan. Yep. And of course, sideboard all-star naturalize. Although, like mm -hmm. I said, in Instructed right now, there's just no reason to play naturalize because you got Thrashing Bronidon and uh, a Reclamation Sage now, so. Yep. There's no reason. Yep. Oh, no, 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 Lena. Yep. We, we already talked to her, talked about her, and meh. Yeah. I just think that six mana cost is well. rough. Yeah. It doesn't fit well with the deck that she's obviously supposed to go in. Could be wrong. I don't know. Hey, hey, I'm not an expert. I'm just saying what I'm what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. Uh, Another ambulance safe Hey, you dude. could really make those tokens feel the feel the pain, dude, with two of those. I could also just play Goblin Chain Whirler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Enigma Drake. That's one of my favorites from uh our devastation. Yep, uh, great card. I've gotten it to work pretty successfully in a M19 draft as well. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a very very decent pick. It just takes a couple of spells, honestly, to to make him worth it. You know. Yeah. Well, I think you need like probably like at least ten spells in your deck to make him really shine. But you could probably right. get away with like seven or eight and still yeah. still be pretty decent in your limited deck. Hey, look at that! The other spirit. Yeah, that's some pretty sweet graveyard hate too. A two one flyer for two is always great and you know it's a really aggressive costed card and the ability well, we to know... sack it and exile a graveyard is pretty awesome. Well, we know that the zombie deck, if it makes if it does anything in standard, is going to have a lot of graveyard nonsense going on with it. So maybe we'll see that be sideboarded or that tombstone from Ixalan, whatever I can't remember the name of it, but Well, right now it's Godfarer's Gift is the deck that you need this against. Because mm -hmm. that's a very popular deck right now, and uh, it just kills you so fast if you don't have a way to deal with their graveyard. Yeah, there you go. You got your mythic wild yeah, card. Another mythic. Why didn't they give it? Oh, oh mythic. double mythic! Double mythic. Burr, 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 burr. Technically double mythic. <laughs> anyway, that was going to bring up a point, Dad. Why don't they have a separate radial ticker for the mythic wild card? It's only like the the oh, rare. It replaces it gets... your rare wild card. For oh, a... on your on your whatever yeah you're, you're how many packs is it to get a mythic 30 yeah so it's six more packs until your next rare wild card and 30 more packs until your next mythic yeah okay damn that's a lot of packs yeah so lightning strike yeah, always lightning good strike. millstone for your mill uh you mill players you Boo. <laughs> Texan tower could be good if there's a just ridiculous hexproof creature in the format um Obviously, if you can pick this up during limited, it's kind of a good pick to sideboard, just in case your opponent gets that dumb vine mare combo. <laughs> yeah, it definitely isn't the worst land. Uh, I mean, it sucks that if you get it and it's a rare. I, I don't know if you would 
necessarily want it. Yeah, it's not a first it pick. It's like one of those picks that if it gets yeah. passed like three or four times and you don't see a better card to pick, then definitely grab it for your sideboard. Yeah. You definitely don't feel good opening it. No, no. You got Mill to work in standard. You are a god, sir. Oh, Dark Roller Oracle. Like I was talking about before with Anticipate, you can kind of turn this into, you know, just play the top card of your deck, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of a high cost otherwise, though, because you do need some, like, tokens or other sacrifice fodder. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I was looking at what could be the, the groundwork for a Goblin deck, and th I don't think they're there yet. Uh, same with elves. I don't think elves are there yet. But it feels like it's what's weird about the goblins that we've seen so far is they don't they're good individual cards, but they don't necessarily mesh with goblins as a tribe. So yeah. Um, if you could vamp for like ten seconds, I'll be right back. Yep, oh. I definitely can. Thanks for the follow, Dark Gengar. Dark Gengar, one of my favorite Pokemon. Not the dark part, but just Gengar in general. You know. One of my favorite Pokemon. Anyway, talking about goblins that are good on their own, but aren't necessarily something you see in a goblin tribe. Well, Gutter Snipe, obviously an amazing card. Really cool, limited card, you know. Uh, I thought it could work in a wizard's deck that has a lot of spells. Maybe some burn deck. Obviously, in a burn deck, it's going to be great. Um, but it's just like one of those things that's a, it's a goblin, but it doesn't do anything necessarily that that promotes a goblin tribal unless you're filling it with burns then it's just like a burn deck so honestly i don't know i wanted goblins and elves to be a thing since dominaria introduced a few goblin and a few elf cards um and i thought it was going to ramp up to m19 just sitting the you know sitting those tribes over the edge and being standard decks but it looks like uh, they're going to aim more towards Ravnica to kind of have those uh, tribes, you know, come out, come into their own, basically, uh, in standard. So, you know, I was a little wrong, but I mean, Gutter Snipe itself is an as an individual card is amazing. And then, of course, you have Angel of the Dawn, which is a great limited, you know, top end card. Sky Scanner actually isn't awful. I love it actually. Uh, you know, obviously it's a little. More expensive, but I still like it. All the finds is blah. I mean, it's zero three for with reach defender. Eh. Havoc devils. I mean, all whatever picks. And I'm just waiting for Mike to flip this damn rare. I'm just venting to you guys. I'm just talking. I'm not saying anything. I'm just talking. But how are you guys doing tonight? We're trying. We're not reading in chat as much because we're just trying to get through these packs. But I want to know how you guys are doing. Workman, I'm glad to hear that, dude. Hope you guys had a great weekend and you guys are ready for work in the morning because God knows I am not ready for work. I just... Woo! Man, I hear that. You got to take that lonely walk upstairs to your bedroom knowing that tomorrow you start another week. And a week lasts a lot longer than your weekend. Oh, God. Help me. Oh. Okay. Thank you for holding down the fort. <laughs> all right. No problem, dude. Now with all that anticipating buildup, what is it? Hey, that is my favorite card of the set. Yep, mine too. All right, Regal Blood Lord's pretty cool if you can get the life gain deck together. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it just feels like all the good cards are, like, for, for life gain, is, like, mono white. I'm not sure about the black. In limited, yeah, it's white black, but I'm I'm talking about, like, in standard, I don't know. Oh, yeah, and limited, yeah, it's a good card. I, I, don't, think in, oh, I don't think in standard it's going to do a heck of a lot, but... Yeah, I mean, still, you need a good amount of life gain for me to want to pay five mana for... I mean, a 2-4 flyer is not awful, but it's still... That's still a hefty price for a two-four flyer if you that's all you, if that's all it was with your 
limited amount of actual life gain. Yeah. Now, Meteor Golem, that thing is a boss. Uh, I'm definitely going to be trying to do something with that with the reanimator shell. Uh, a meteor, go- meteor, meteor Golem? Yeah. Oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> no, he, I mean, obviously, it's insane if you, if you have the ability to pull it out for free. He's definitely a meteor than your average golem. Uh, uh, Unless you count uh, Karn. Karn's pretty small. <laughs> Karn is buff, dude. And he ends the game much faster than this. But as a reanimation target, this thing is pretty boss because it destroys anything, even planeswalkers. So, yeah. Mono White Lightning awesome. is killing you, stupid nub, in, Magic, in Arena. I mean, I've seen it a couple of times. It depends on how fast they can get. Like, it depends on how quick they are. If they're, if they're, if they set up quickly, that's the, like almost no coming back. But then again, if you're running any kind of like board wipe, Runic Armistor. Now that's a very interesting card. Yeah, it's a good hate card against uh, Walking Ballista. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh. I was thinking of something about dinosaurs, Oops. but... No. Oh, sorry, I clicked. <laughs> um, see you, Armstrong. I don't think it's going to see much play, to be oh, honest. No. Maybe maybe a cyborg card. It's got Thrashing Bronodon to compete with, and that's just a better card. Um, yeah. Classic Murder. A- awesome removal for limited. Uh, and standard sometimes, In too. general, it's in general, it's just, it's good removal. Uh, Sideboard all this is a lot of This is a pack I would not like to open in, in a draft because look at all this removal. You have Shock, Lightning Strike, Murder. You have your your pick of good removal here. Yeah, I think I would just take Murder first because the black... I'd probably take Murder, yeah. Yeah, the black decks are pretty decent, uh, but Lightning Strike's is, it, really close behind it. That's yeah, right I was about to say, if you choose Murder, you're kind of putting yourself in the camp of black because it is double black compared to Lightning Strike's one uh, you know, mono red. Oh, Buxton. much much more splashable, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the follow, Corvinox. Um, all right, what do we got for the rare? Escape Shift. Wow, what a... Just... What a card. What a card. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah. I want to do something with it in Standard, but I don't quite know if pieces are there to... I've heard yeah. some people are brewing right now, but it might be one of those cards takes a while to... So the, the only thing I really heard wind of people talking about is this compa- uh, coupled with that merfolk from Dominaria, the uncommon. I forgot its name. Oh, Tatiova? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the obvious so, one because it's one of the few landfall cards that we have right now. Yeah, su- like pseudo landfall. It kind of affects. It's, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously just one of those mythics that you do not want to see in a draft because it's just not going to give you anything really of value, but... I mean, I might put a one of copy in my Moldrotha deck, because um, basically, in that case, it would thin my deck out a little bit, which would be nice. And yeah. also, I can just play my lands out of my graveyard using Moldrotha. Um, I mean, there's definitely places that you, this thing can go. It's going to take a lot of brewing to see if it's usable, and I don't think it's going to be in any deck that's going to be like a clear outlier. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Lich's Caress has been pretty good. Um, I mean, that life gain is always getting limited, and you know, you just take anything that says destroy target creature on it and limited. So, yeah, definitely not a standard card though. I mean, we got Brass's Contempt, which does exile for one less mana and gains two life, which is you know, yeah, not that much different than three in uh, standard. So, uh, I mean, what would you what, what would you rather pick, Strangling Spores or Lich's Caress? Obviously, you're just gonna go Lich's Caress. Yeah, no, that's still the much better because, you know, this can't take care of their bomb, you know, which yeah. when you're casting a five mana removal spell, there's a good chance it's that they've got something bigger than a minus three, minus three will take care of on the field, so. Yep. Oh, no, Lathless. Cool. Hey, man, that, those, that's a key card you need for that dragon deck, so. And I just say Alex Konstad is on fire, the artist on this one. Um, mm. He was also the artist on Slimefoot, so he's been just oh, doing... Really? some pretty incredible work and that's a big range that he's showing there because like yeah dragons are just a whole other game uh compared to you know little fun fungus guys so <laughs> yep that might be a so little guys, biased. Mike, Mike knows a lot more about the artist than I do so if you need any kind of art commentary Mike's the man for you <laughs> that's like my this, old... looks, this is this, this is the mirror of the first pack you opened Oh yeah, pretty close. At least with the uncommons. I'm not, I can't remember what the commons were, but the commons were exactly this. I love the artwork on a Johnny's Welcome. That's really neat. Me too. It's great. 
Like it looks very digital, but I still like the you know composition of it. Oh, Eric Deschamps has done lots of incredible work for the game. I can't think of one of his other ones off the top of my head, but um, Elvis Rejuvenator's pretty decent. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's ramp if you need it. Uh, so, Remora, just real quick, uh, off the top of my head, I believe we've opened two rare wild cards and one mythic wild card out of our uh, out of our pack so far. <clears throat> Yep, and then uh, I can't I can't speak on uncommons and commons, but I'm pretty sure it's three total, two rare, one, one mythic. Yeah, stupid nub. Uh, that's actually the deck that Simon's trying to put together right now with the uh, uh, Colossal Majesty, right? Oh uh, yeah, power, yeah, power matters deck. Yep. Yep, I'm testing it right now. Uh, right now, I only have a one of. I might. I don't know if I'm gonna put two in it, but I mean, it seems it seems okay so far. What I've seen. Yep. Gen of wishes. Oh, that's another card to combo with. Uh... Oh man, if you could make a deck that had like this and the uh, the Dark Dweller Oracle and like some anticipates. Oh, yeah. yeah. The only problem in Limit is that you need some powerful payoffs to actually make it a cheat on the mana. Because like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a good chance that you pay four mana to play a four cost thing, and that that's still fine because you're basically drawing a card at that point. But yeah, uh, it's still a four four flyer for five, which is a good rate. So. For limited, it's a fine card. Yep. Peter, uh, you're actually 100% right about Johnny's Welcome. But, I mean, you gotta kind of look at cards for the set that they're actually introduced in. Yeah, because, I mean, there's almost always something better in <laughs> in the yeah. grand in the, you know, in scope the of the game. Of MTG. Um, oh, I, I gotta take it at face value. I hate when you open a, a great card and it's enabler in the same pack because you know there's probably not. Although Fountain of Renewal might wheel if you. So pick. I would 100. Like if you were actually gonna go that. Like, let's say this is pack one and your rare is garbage. Uh, Regal Blood Lord. I would pick that and then I would assume probably the Fountain's gonna wheel. Uh, almost definitely. Yeah, that is definitely. If you can get a Regal Blood Lord and then maybe like the Epicure guy, um, I think Fountain of Renewal is definitely a main deckable at that point. Yeah. Oh, oh there it is. It's part of the elf tribal deck that it's not going to do anything until uh, Ravnica, probably. Yep. I mean, it is a really great elf card, though. That's for sure. No, it's, yeah, it's really good. The yeah. ability of it just fishing up its own other lords is really good. Do you think this is going to get into modern elves? I, I don't know anybody that plays it to, to ask, but... So I'm not, a, I'm not a huge modern player, but I do have a few friends that play modern, well, mostly modern, like goblins and stuff. But no, <laughs> is my short answer. Probably not. Yeah, I, I think Maria from Magic the Amateuring, <laughs> who does play, or no, Megan does. Yeah, Megan plays uh, elves, and I think she said maybe, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Because there's other... Elf lords that can tutor up. That's plenty. Elves, That's so. plenty elf yeah. Outside of being an, a lord, it just doesn't provide you anything else. Yeah. Well, Luminous Bonds is the first pick here for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Splashable well, and kind of removal. Although again, actually, I, I, would, I would lightning strike. I'm oh sorry. yeah, I, I was like, oh wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's lightning lightning strike. strike's just better than Luminous Bonds, guys. Also, but this, again, this is a pack with so much removal in it. Oh yeah, we got three bombs of removal. Yeah, three, and then three, three of the best. Actually, no, one, no one actually wants to pick that, but uh, I would pick it if I had the uh, the Drake, um, Enigma Drake. If I was just oh, playing yeah. like a spells matter deck, and you can get that one Merfolk that returns a sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, I'm not saying Lava Axe is bad. It's just that damage to the face is just not worth as much in a lot of scenarios. So I'd say it's kind of bad. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's you don't want to be doing it most of the time unless you're at, unless they're at that life and you can just kill them but gore claw terror so of Calcisma. I, I actually just crafted two of him for my green stompy deck oh yeah he does <coughs> fit in pretty well if you're doing the power matters deck yeah because um, i mean he's fine on his own and you know that cost reduction could be pretty great <laughs> in a lot of ways yeah, it's, so. it's, it's amazing it's really good uh, hey uh bob bobby jean thanks for the follow yeah, he even pumps himself up to five when he attacks until the end of turn, so like that can yeah. get you three mana closer to a Galta on his own. So yep. he's he's already five, six, seven of the power that you need. 
I mean, kind of uh, what you need for Galta. Obviously, the two colorless is separate, but yeah, that's not bad at all. And just a little tip for you guys, we might be having a little uh, lore bite coming on that guy. Yeah. Down the pipe once I... Uh... I, dug up, <laughs> I dug up some lore on him, which you guys might be a little shocked about, so... Yeah, we'll save the uh, the surprise for the actual video, though. Gigantosaurus and the Galta feels so good. Well, it better feel good. Uh, Leo and Vanguard's kind of meh. Eh, cat deck. Yeah, this is a pretty meh uh, opening pack. I, w I mean, I would still, I would probably take uh, take Vengeance to be honest. If I'm just looking at this, if I knew I was gonna go white, I might take <laughs> take Vengeance. Otherwise, Aviation Pioneer and Rocks Oracle are pretty close to each other. Yeah. Uh, Rock if I'm already white, I'm taking I'm taking take Vengeance. Yeah. Uh, Alpine Moon. Boo. That's. Not a good card. Love the art. Um, I know, the art, the art is beautiful. Uh, Elena Danner is the one that did all the uh, basic uh, land cards for uh, uh -huh. M19. She did that awesome panorama. Oh yeah. Yeah. Volley Veteran, that's the guy you want for your goblin deck. Oh, definitely. Uh, in Limited, he hasn't really kind of shown up the way I thought he would just because like, there's not quite enough goblins to make a, a good goblin deck in Limited unless you get really lucky. Like, you just have Four to... in 19 itself, no. Yeah. Um, in Standard, maybe at some point it could be good. Uh, I'm like, not sure. Like I, I was talking when you when you went away that elves and, and goblins just haven't been... Like, I thought Dominaria was its prelude, and I thought that m19 was going to be the day like the set where they dump a bunch of these good goblins and elves and they were going to be a deck but it looks like they set them up again with m19 and that ravnica might be the time that they actually try and make them into standard viable decks so yeah because we know there could definitely be some good goblin cards in ravnica yeah definitely possibly even some hopefully, hopefully, they're not all, is it? hopefully they're not all is it you get some mono red ones there's some good rakdos ones too right Oh yeah, yeah. Rakdos and Izzet both have goblins. Uh, Blue. Okay. Next yeah. pack. <laughs> we talked about him. He's, yeah. Surge Mare, another rare wild card. You know, you're gonna be getting plenty of those. Electrify. Uh, this pack I'd probably take Electrify. Yeah. Electrify deals with a lot of stuff in this limited format. I think I just pronounced it Electrify. <laughs> That's not correct. This is the fancier Electrify. <laughs> oh, another Hydra uh, Boo. Yeah. Next pack. Now the mythics are really starting to slow down. Um, Nightmare's place. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you can get into the life gain deck, Nightmare's Thirst is awesome. But yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely one of the one of the huge cards for that. And there's one of the few enchantment payoff or enchantments to use with the payoffs. Oaken form. Yep. It's really not too bad in this limited set, but there is a lot of really good removal, so it does make it a little. A little harder yeah, I mean, to play that kind of stuff. Buffing plus three plus three for three mana, it just, it doesn't... It's okay, that's yeah. all I'll say. It's, it's just, just okay. okay, yep. <laughs> As Nitsohan was saying, yep. Just fine. Uh, Omen Speaker is another one you can combo with the uh, the Jin or the uh, Dark mm -hmm. Dweller Oracle. Just, just crying in general. But it's yeah. a decent card. Oh yeah, Buffing no, it's, I mean, it's a 1-3, so it's a good speed bump <clears throat> if you're playing a slower deck, and the Scry is always great, so... Mm -hmm. Apex of power. Okay. Pretty unplayable. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a that's a ooh, that's a lot of mana. <laughs> and there might be a way to like just do some dorky, you know, uh, Johnny stuff in standard with this, where you uh, there's the wildfire eternal, where you can like if they don't block it, then that you get to cast any sorcery card out of your hand. That yeah, would be a just, pretty insane combo, but it's just too much setup uh, for. That's very Christmas landy of you. Oh but... yeah, very Man. Christmas land. Uh, that card is another. I don't, I don't understand. Oh, the vault did fill up. Look. Hey, I, did I not tell you? Yeah, uh, I want to say I heard that too from like Saffron Olive was talking or something. Yeah, but... I saw it on Twitter too, and I was just like, but it's not there. So why the how the hell is it gonna? 
show up. Oh, it looks like it shows up when it's filled, so you'll never know what progress it's at. But that's crazy. I want to know what progress it was at and how it got filled. Yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> that's really because annoying. Because you didn't, you didn't open any duplicates. Yeah. Well, not, essentially not no duplicates. So oh, like, oh no, you've always gotten a little bit of progress on the chest. Um, yeah, but I thought they from, got from rid of packs. the. I know. I thought they got rid of the pack opening amount because they already are giving you rare wild cards from opening packs. I thought it was just from dusting. Oh, Peter makes a good point with the uh, Joda in your deck. You oh, can play. Right. Yeah, Apex of Power for five mana, which does make it a much more appealing card. But wow, okay, so you're actually right. But then again, you have to put in all that mana. Yeah, Joda is still just not something I want to be playing in standard. And then Apex of Power still has what three red costs. Yeah, if you're playing a brawl deck, that could be fun. You know, just a fun, yeah. fun card for brawl. Or, I mean, it's obviously a commander card. Like, <laughs> commander yeah. players probably love you know that as a you know big red payoff. Oh my gosh! Wow. Get out <laughs> of here, Windbreaker Sphinx! You suck. Oh, they're fancy. Oh, wow. I'm actually kind of curious to how the vault gets filled now. I, I don't know what adds to it, what doesn't. I guess it is just opening packs. Ooh, Sarkon's on ceiling. So yeah. now this is a huge enabler for the dragon deck. Oh yeah, and it's a mega limited bomb for sure. Oh, in limited, it's just like, it's going to end the game. Yep. As long but as you have the cards with the right power, I which you will obviously be tailoring to. Yeah, I definitely think this could see standard play, and that's part of why I think Cleansing Nova is just better than Fumigate, because a control deck, if this lands on the field, it's a cast trigger, so... Like, even if you get your spell countered, this would still trigger. Um, so, like, your opponent could just kill you just by casting spells and you countering them. So, mm -hmm. that's why I think Cleansing Nova is super important, because it destroys enchantments like this that it can just steal the game. It's definitely been a surprise for Limited for me. I didn't think it was going to be that good, but it actually is. Yeah, definitely. So, Active Treason is another reason that... Uh, Dark Dweller Oracle is decent because it's just another way to sack a creature. So you can like yeah. active treason and then sack their creature, which makes it a removal spell on top of the. Uh, yeah, again, active treason is just the card that you probably won't want to play in limited. You have to have sacrifice outlets to make it worth yeah. playing for the most part, unless unless you unless like still like still their Galta or something. Yeah, like it's a good sideboard card if they have it, like it a is. super bomb. Oh, they're clear. Uh... Now you're starting to get doubles on cards that are just like, eh. Yeah. Definitely makes pack um, opening a little less fun. You've reached four Gargoyle sen Sentinels? Is that all gray, or is that just the, what it looks like? Hmm? Oh, the no, Gargoyle that's just Sentinel? what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, no, it is. Okay, that, okay. so you haven't hit four of those yet. It's just very gray on gray. Yeah, <laughs> it is okay. super gray. The art palette there is, or the color palette is uh, limited. Yeah, definitely very artifacty, that's for sure. Yep. Um, Miss Caller, I've heard talk that this could be good in like Legacy because there's lots of lots and lots of ways to cheat uh, stuff into play, uh, yeah. like Emrakul or um, uh, Merit Lodge, mm -hmm. things like. Oh, that's a token creature actually, so that wouldn't work. But you get what I'm saying, like or uh, Gr yeah. Grishol Brand decks um, where yeah. they cheat Grishol Brand out with the the Sickening Shoal or whatever it is. Um, yeah. There's a few different cards that that's good hate for, but don't know if it's actually going to see play. Oh, there's your Colossal Majesty. That thing is a uh, super bomb and limited. Yep, obviously really nice. I love the art on it too, very Ixlani. Yeah, I love the perspective on it. Like, I love when they like zoom in on things like that and give you that. Yeah. Um, oh, like, look at the sense of scale on this. It's just incredible with the... Um, <laughs> uh, you can see the legs in the background. Yeah, it how can you not huge. get more Ixalani than this? It's a giant dinosaur with monkeys a or goblins, if you want to call them that, going after a treasure chest. That is like the most Ixalani picture I've ever seen in my life. Also, this has really great flavor text, but we're not going to see it on Arena. Uh, yeah, not. Oh, another Stone Cold yeah. Bomb Unlimited. Oh my goodness. Yes, this is amazing. This card is oh obnoxious and limited because you're just like, yeah. okay, I kill... Oh, especially with that, uh, the Doom Dissenter or whatever. He makes two, oh, yeah. two, two tokens when he dies. <laughs> it's like, so oh. it just It just makes removal so painful to use on your opponent. Yep. Um, Abnormal Endurance, I've gotten some play out of when I've got a Meteor Golem. 
because I can yeah. <laughs> abnormal endurance my meteor golem it trades with whatever blocks it and then yeah. comes back and gets to destroy something again it's not an awful card it's just situational yeah. uh apparently dryad green seeker is really great uh needs has been raving about that one I mean it's kind of like a one three draw a card for two yep it's really not bad awesome um uh, there's a phallic spire i mean a rupture spire <laughs> um, wow that was subtle dude <laughs> when you that is go an three interesting colors, design it's That's there a very for interesting, you it's very interesting art decision yeah if it goes in with all the uh the worms that <laughs> have similar <laughs> i think uh cube april actually made a uh, a tag on scryfall for yeah. like <laughs> Phallic cards. <laughs> I oh, told her, God. I was like, well, you gotta add that one, that's for sure. Although, I think this is a reprint. Um, yeah. Oh. Hey, that's number. That's Mythic Wildcard naturally number two. So, hey, look, it's Nicol Bolas. <laughs> it's, yeah. Look, guys, it's totally him. Now, quick, Mike, do you actually want Nicol Bolas, uh, the Ravager? Um, right now, he's the best. He's part of the best deck. Uh, Grixis has apparently been doing mm -hmm. amazing. I've seen him a lot in standard, yeah. at least on, on arena. Let me preference the guys. I've seen a lot of Nicol Bolas the Ravager played in arena, so. Oh, they're Bane Fire. I guess we only just passed the halfway point. We've got yeah, some. This is, this is Gutter Knight number two. Or number Splendid three. Angel. Splendid. I mean, it's another mythic, and it's a good one. Yeah, some people think this might see play in standard. Like, this is like one of the few things that actually gets you tickets on MTGO right now. <laughs> Really? Um, yeah, and it's an amazing limited bomb. Holy crap. Well, I mean, they're really pushing late game decks. Like, <laughs> they're adding so much to the realm of the, the mono white life game deck. Like, why wouldn't you want to play this? It's a, it's a huge flying body, cheap. It gives you a huge payoff. Like, well, it's a 3 3 flyer for three. But I do think yeah. the red decks can keep this in check because they have a braid and lightning strike right now. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it also has the ability to. to to buff itself to out of range so yeah but it takes six mana to do that so <laughs> it's like i didn't say weight. it was cheap yeah i didn't say it was cheap i'm definitely gonna experiment with it i just it sucks it's, it's mythic i wish it was rare uh druid of the horns it's one of those if you could actually get yeah. the enchantment deck together but good luck <laughs> just i really wish that it was enchantments or like art like equipments yeah, that would um, kind of make it like uh, what's his name from the last set. Um, yeah, I can't I can't recall it either. But like <laughs> Kelvin, somebody. Yeah. Um, Dwindle is fine. <clears throat> it's just removal if you're in blue. <laughs> so. Yep. Not bad though. Oh, wow, that's away. number four. Yep. Yep. Bent Wind Raider Sphinx. Uh, Sift is awesome. Sift. Yep. It's always getting limited, and especially uh, if you have the mill deck. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reclamation Sage is what it is. You know, it's good. Yeah. It's a sideboarder. <laughs> oh no, wow. fine man. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get you know bad rares. Oh. Hey, the rare opened up automatically. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it's a good one. Yeah, it's, yeah. Demanding Dragon, awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that definitely could see some play post rotation uh, once Glorybringer is out. Yeah, as like the de facto like... five drop. But yeah, it definitely it, it, it's in the same vein. So, yep. There's some of our only in, or mana fixing it uncommon. <laughs> and just so you guys know, demanding dragon is a dragon depicted on Tarkir. So yep, there's that. Right in the official story. Uh, really good in commons. Yeah. I don't know if I'd take, take the giant or the bugler. That's it. I mean, it depends. Like, if what what you're gonna, what you feel like you want to go. I guess it, yeah. it's, if it's first pick and the rare's, you know, junk. Oh, skeleton take, archer is amazing too. Um, I mean, skeleton archer is not bad. I'll probably pick the giant just because there's a couple other rare cards in here. I don't. Know. Yeah, I would say. Hmm. I might take the bugler because I think the red white deck is kind of a low to the ground aggressive deck. Yeah. Over the giant, but the giant is really great. So big bodies, like they, it's they do a lot of work in, in limited. You uh, know, it doesn't have a big butt, but it has this, you know high attack. Sorry, that was another gin of wishes for the rare. You guys are yeah. We, we don't need to talk about that again. Crucible worlds. Crucible hey. worlds. Eh. 
this just doesn't seem as i mean it's an artifact so it's a little harder to remove compared to a creature but we have that creature right now that does the same thing <laughs> and of course it's seen no play so yeah murder definitely would just take the murder yeah well actually if i was unless uh, no, no no unless you want money yeah <laughs> although it's not uh crucible is not worth anything on uh mtgo but in and paper it's, not, it's, it's worth, not worth obviously it's not worth anything in arena yeah, is Rath again? Could see play possibly. I don't again, know. Again, really a card. A three-three death Air test for three is not bad. And the I, was, I actually crafted a couple of the aerial uh, engineers uh, for my blue-white artifact deck, and it's just not as good as I thought it was going to be. It turns out it, like a four-four flying for four is obviously really good. Um, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's amazing. Never mind, I love it. Yep. You just gotta make sure it's consistently paying off. Like we talked yeah. about before, it just might be the white blue is not the colors you want for the the all yeah. artifacts type, you know, style deck. Uh, Aether Tunnel. If you get the uh, Vine Mirror combo, you just win. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very, it's very possible in limited. It it, it sucks because it's not as good as the uh, the Murpho comment, the Murpho combo, the Hexproof Murpho, and then basically anything else. But uh, yeah, this is one a with the cheaper. wind, yeah. one with the wind combo with the hexproof Merfolk from Ixalan. That was a combo that won limited games, and those were both commons. So it's a little bit harder this time around, but still very possible. Uh, the Aether Shield Artificer is pretty darn good if you get into the blue white artifact deck. Yeah. Actually, that might even work in your standard deck. Well, possibly. Maybe. This is still a little. I mean, expensive. you can make a Heart of Cure in a 6 6 indestructible. Oh, yeah, that is actually really good. Because there was, um, there, for when the vehicles, when Mardu vehicles was a big thing a while mm -hmm. back, there was the uh, the black red, the Rakdos guy that pumped an artifact plus two plus oh at yeah. the beginning of combat. And this is better than that. I don't know. Uh, number, number three. Hey, they're going to get that mythic wild card, though. There it is. More lightning mares, though. Oh, prodigious growth. <laughs> Obviously not that's, standard that's playable, aura. but in I would still take it. You know, what do you mean? It's giving me one, one more plus one plus one rather than its cost. Yeah, that's, that is that is it's it's amazing because it's one more, dude. Well, and it gives you trample. <laughs> like yeah. that that makes it worth playing, in my opinion. But, I was being facetious, by the way. Obviously, yeah. like it's still a very high cost. It's not uh, great though. Like it's not you know a bomb and limited. But if you can pick it up no. and you're already playing like a big green deck, I, I think it's probably still worth. Putting yeah. In there. If you have the if you have the ability to get the six man on a regular basis, definitely. Uh, but then you get that creature murdered and you feel really bad. Yeah. But if you think about it, it's kind of like, like yeah, you get two for one. But in some cases, it's almost like giving like playing a six six trample haste. Because yeah. like whatever creature you put it on on the battlefield can attack that turn more likely than yeah. not. So, but that's a good lesson for you guys if you're playing. Hey, another rare. That's three rare wild cards. Yeah. Uh, a good lesson for you guys if you have an enchantment like that, you put that on like your least valuable creature. You oh, put yeah. that on a one one. Definitely. So if they, if you if you're gonna force them to use a removal, they're using it on something that at base is really bad. Hey, plague bear finally got it. Wow, that's the first one. one of my that's my that's my personal favorite mare. Yeah, uh, all the horses. So this is really good. Wow, uh, Hydra. Okay. That's that's the full playset, I think. Hydra, hungry side, uh, Hydra. Okay, uh, another good elf. I've seen talk that people tested this in standard, but I don't know how good it's doing because yeah. it basically. Because it, you know, always guarantees that you get a body off of it when when it gets targeted by a spell or ability. It's not terrible yeah. for an aggressive deck, but I just don't think standard green decks really still want to be on like an aggro deck. Like yeah, so it's it's it is a really good aggressive card. I mean, it's a two three body for two mana, but at rare, at least it, when we're talking about arena like economy, you do not want to be sending a rare on basically a two three for two. You know. Yeah, it gives you some some kind of benefit if it if it gets, you know, lightning struck or something like that. But obviously, this is a limited all star though. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, if you're drafting, like this is an amazing card, two three yeah. for two with an upside. Yeah, with two and late game, upsides, and late game late relevance. Game. Yeah, 
Yep, late game relevance and, and actual utility. Amazing. I uh, kind of like Salvager of Secrets because you get to buy back like a, a murder or something like that, or even a card yeah. draw spell, which is always it's good. It's not bad. It's still five mana, but it, it, having having that with a body is not awful. Uh, still love Macabre Waltz as a card for the art, yeah. but... Agreed. It's one of the more unique artwork for Magic the Gathering. It's not a bad card to pick up if you got something like the Psychic Symbionts and like things that have really good ETB triggers. Yeah. Or the Meteor Golem, of course. <laughs> yeah. Another clan call. Oh, now you can now you can have you actually call up the second one. And their amulet of safekeeping number four. Yep, and the rest of the pack's garbage. Yeah, Gas, Gas Park Twins isn't bad. I mean it's a seven seven trample for seven, which is on rate, but I mean I, I for limited, it's fine. Um, there's not other. There's there's no, there's no real good picks here. So yeah, it's a good top end, especially because it can block it two is. creatures. So yeah, and it's a tree folk. If you got your tree folk commander deck. I don't know if the two two zombie for two would be better. To be honest, I don't know. But vine mare now, that's a good card. Finally. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's, that's the first really one we open. Yeah, it, I think it is. Uh, Drill master is really great in the red white aggressive deck. Um, mm -hmm. Wind Mage is just good in most blue decks. I mean, three, two, two flyer for three is not bad to begin with, and then it's got the pseudo prowess. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely a good card, good common. Second oh, Cleansing Nova. Yep. Yeah, nothing incredible there. Another yeah. cleric. Boo. That's number four. I actually think that's number four. Oh, yeah, Spit good Flame. Fun. I mean, the Dragon's deck, obviously, it's a good include, but... Yeah. Also, it's still a really great pick in Limited, too. I mean, three mana yeah, to deal good, four it's damages. Good, it's good. good. Yeah. Armor's yeah. a good card. Yeah. Definitely a risk. You know, it's an enchantment, so you take the risk, but man, if you're playing any, like, uh, main green for your Limited deck, that's pretty awesome. And only bad thing is it doesn't give you trampled, so you still can get blocked all day, but... Yeah. Graveyard Marshall's good. There's our bad, bad Crypt Breaker. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even a bad, a bad one is not awful. Yeah. Ooh, Chaos, Chaos one. one. That Se might be a deck that wand. I try to build. <laughs> yes. It's, it's funny so how dumb. this is the second one we've gotten in so many sets. Such a dumb card. Yep. How does it do? Okay, so target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards. Or they may cast, right? Or no, you may cast that card. No, okay. you cast it. So you basically steal an instant or sorcery from them, and then you exile the rest of the cards. Well, you put them in the bottom of their, their library. Yeah, it could be a control, you know, uh, an anti-control card, but... Yeah, I, I was just about to think like a mirror match for control. Basically, what you'd always do is wait until they cast a spell, and then you'd activate the wand just in case you hit one of their counter spells. Yeah. Because then you get to counter whatever they were playing, you know. So you always want to do it. I mean, in that's that's the, to... the that is like that is like the the ideal situation. Yeah, like super ideal. Got to say, it'd be pretty hilarious to sit there countering their own stuff, and then. In the against the red black deck, you might rip one of their unlicensed disintegrations or something, so that's not too bad mm -hmm. either. Yeah, it's it could possibly see play, but then against like a green how deck, you're like, is, how much does that cost? Four? Oh, four to activate. Yeah, that's kind of rough. Yeah, it's not that bad though. That's the right cost though. If it was any less, it'd just be oh, just broken. <clears throat> Uh, Hero Mancer's Cage is removal. Yay. Yeah. Higher rate than we've seen lately with yeah. like Seal Away and stuff. You know, the same rarity. Four, four man is a little bit top heavy, but. Star Crown Stag is good in the aggressive deck. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like the uh, the Paca, Pachycephalosaurus or whatever from yeah. Exelon. I, I love. Remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like 2 2 for 3. So basically, it's on the same rate, too, uh, as that card, so. The other one was cheaper though, which makes it better, but. Yeah, of course, and, and aggressive, but. but. This is a core set, so, you know. You I know, love the art of that card, by the way, of the stag. Oh, I yeah. Just love, I love it. Reminds me of like an awesome uh, WoW mount or something. Yeah. Now you're talking. Ooh, another instilling. 
cards that you probably are going to make into a deck that you don't have to use your wild cards for, right? Yep, that's what I want to get. Oh, oh, you got plenty of you got plenty of those guys. Switch rune, that's a weird card, and that is rare wild card number four. For those keeping track, that's number four naturally picked out of the pack. Oh, nice. Um, lots of good, lots of white cards here. Lots of playable white cards. I think I would probably take Switcheroo because it's again one of those situations where you get to get the best creature. But it is, yeah. it's not as good as like the clone though because the clone can at least hit your own guy if you're yeah, the one with the is, powerful creature. So this is obviously way worse than like a clone effect simply because like in, in a clone effect you're looking for just a good creature to be on the battlefield, yours or your opponent's. <clears throat> Switcheroo, you're not only looking for two creatures on the battlefield, one from you, one from your opponent, but you also want to have one bad card on your end and one good card on their end. Yeah. Ideally. It's a sideboard so card, card is, I think. This, like, this card is super hard to play play around, like, play with. It, it, like, would you would you be happy playing five mana and switch your 2-2 two, two for a 4-4? Four, four? I mean, it's no, not, it's not, not, it's not awful, but it's just like... But if game two, you know that they've got a nickel bolus or something in their deck, then yes, then you bring it definitely in from the great, side, yeah. <laughs> definitely a great sideboard pick, but it's definitely going to be one of those cards that wheels so hard. Yeah, so you pick it up late as a sideboard card. You know. Definitely, it's going to be late pick options. And actually, the clone in this set can only do your own creatures, so that kind of sucks. Oh, it's only your own creatures? Yeah, oh. the three, the three okay. drop one. It, a, uh, is this, it, I think this it's right here, drops. mirror image. Oh, oh, mirror image, yeah, okay, so... You control, yeah, you're right. So, I mean, it's still not bad. It's uncommon, so. No, and if you have, like, Meteor Golem or Psychic Symbiont in your deck yeah. already, then it's awesome because you get to, you know, get the ETB triggers on those. Oh, there's wow. Epic. This is, these rates are actually not bad. They must have just lowered them by, by a little bit or something because, I mean, I know we've opened, you know, 70 packs, more than 72 packs, but... Four rare wild cards and two mythics, that's a lot. And we've gotten however many off this too. Yeah. Oh, but skilled animator, I love that card. Yeah, not yeah, super I impressed love the with it, but it's No, 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 not I'm not not, not, not like in a standard kind of way. I just love the feel of the card. Oh yeah, no, yeah. the art's awesome. <laughs> uh Jason A. Angle does like lots of really good stuff and uh, this is kind of yeah. a Beauty and the Beast inspired piece because he uh you know love that uh, aesthetic of the the living uh, furniture <laughs> type stuff. Yep. Um, but just changing any artifact into a 5-5 five five for 3 mana, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, One, I mean, three, if five. you can pull together enough artifacts and limited, then yeah, it's not bad at all. Like, if you get the uh, the Thopter uh, Pioneers, then yeah. Uh, Dragon's Horde could definitely see play in a yeah, standard Dragon's deck. Yep. Oh, thanks for following Faint Client. Sorry, our follow alerts aren't on right now. You gotta get that set up. <laughs> a Johnny's Pride Mate is another good pick in the pack for sure. If you can yeah, get the uh, life gain. Because that just gets out of control crazy, especially if, if you have the fountain. Oof. I mean, at base, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is it's very serviceable in, in, a, in a limited deck if you need early drops. But yeah. Obviously, you want it to get plus 1, plus 1. Uh, detection tower there. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah. Uh, another Gore Claw. Claw. Definitely going to be seen in some decks. Not in mine, because I don't play green very often. If I do, it's Sultai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this card could still be interesting. I feel like if you can like cheat the counter somehow, obviously this is just a commander card and a half. It's a reprint though, so I'm sure it already yeah. shows up in some commander decks that take lots of turns, but. Mm -hmm. Too slow for like the modern taking turns deck though. Uh, apparently Brawl Bash Ogre has been pretty good i mean it's a four mana three three, three, three mana so yeah you're not going to use the uh other part of it very often unless you got like mm -hmm. stuff that you really can let go of to you know punch through that final damage that you need to close out the game but because yeah. otherwise I mean, at it's least not it, worth at least, it but. at least it has menace uh i mean if it has menace or trampled then that second ability is it, it gets a lot better so if he was just a three three for four that with that ability it would be way worse but the fact that it has menace means it, it does have the ability to sack those creatures and maybe you can get in for that last damage, so. Yeah, and if you have active treason, then you get to sack their guy, but you don't get to attack with their creature when you use active treason, which makes it kind of worse <laughs> by a lot. Yeah. And, and they're gin, that's number four. Ugh. Uh, 
no okay, dark dweller. dweller. It's good, but nothing amazing. <clears throat> oh, myth, myth caller, whatever. Yeah, dark dweller oracle is a guy that you can cheat apex of power out with, but then you don't get the ten mana claws on hey, it. Mer, you just missed, you know, eighty, eighty-one. Um, yeah, you missed a lot of packs. Oh, somebody to show up. <laughs> yeah, Mirth just came in. Oh, hey, Mirth. Came in. It is good to see oh, finally a pla is that the first planeswalker? This is the first and my most likely only planeswalker you're gonna get. Ah. Hey, but it's a good one. Out of, out of the cycle, Johnny's pretty good. Yeah, he could possibly see some play. Mirth, you were on my brother's stream. How dare you, you treason this man? Uh, oh, that's the second Vivictus. Ah, oh. uh, dumb. dumb. That's dumb, not dumb. the that's not the Elder Dragon you want. No, top is on. Marth, I'm just kidding with you. Yeah, I'm glad that you went over there and watched the stream. Tra I love the Transmogrifying Wand. Yeah, and that's actually not a bad card for uh, limited because of all the enchantments running around. Because yeah, like you get to take off really the enchantment nice. and you can, yeah, you know, turn a Vivictus or. Um, Polis or something into a 2-4, which is yeah. not bad. It's just, it's just a really nice reusable kind of removal. 2-4s are not that threatening, but obviously it's way worse than actual removal. But still, if you're taking down one of their Elder Dragons or something like that and giving them a 2-4, you're going to feel really good about that. Yeah. Oh, Mythic Rare Wildcard. Well, that's number three, man. Three and five, I think. I think that might be five. four or five, actually. I, I'm pretty really? sure I've opened an extra couple of those, but Damn, uh, maybe that's I'm really wrong. good. I don't know. I don't know. I think the rate's been really good for you, though. Yeah. Uh, Child of the Night's always a good role player. Well, yeah, like if definitely. you get the black, if you get the life gain deck. Mm, double cast. Uh, That's a fun I'd love to make that work, but I, it just always feels way too risky to take it because there's just so many times where it just sucks <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Oh, the Trash Master. The trash Man's here. <laughs> yep. It definitely seems like a pro wrestler or something <laughs> oh, the trash I mean, master he's very um in theme with danny devito's wrestling character on always sunny in philadelphia oh yeah <laughs> frank garbage, yeah, when he's the garbage, garbage man, man or something like that yeah i saw people putting that gif on twitter he kind of looks like danny devito too I'm not gonna lie right. oh at least you're gonna get another mythic out of your packs. invocation Eh, it's whatever. Really cool art, but <clears throat> otherwise, eh. Yeah, Dragon Egg. Dragon Egg's good, though. Yeah, there's enough Dragon Synergy, and this is pretty decent on zone. Is this one of those contract? Woo. Ooh, okay, so this is a fun. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, Saffron Olive's idea on a deck for this. I'm not sure if he originally came up with it or. Uh, I mean, Ooh. a lot of people pointed out. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a obvious. It's a very obvious. Um, Two card kind of win condition, so yeah. Arcane Addict adaptation, then you just gotta get four creatures on the field and you win. Well, four different ones, yeah. but yeah. You build your deck with a lot of different named creatures, <laughs> you know, to help facilitate yep. it. Obviously, probably with the worst limited cards you could ever see. Oh, uh, no, it's actually really good. Wow, it's five mana draw four. Oh, I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. I drew four cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lose four life. I thought it was just you lose four life. My bad. No, no that's yeah. not bad then. Draw four cards for five mana. That's not bad at all. I'm pretty sure I you did the same thing when I first saw it. I, I totally didn't think about like, oh yeah, five mana for four cards is awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a really good rate. Losing four life is so in, uh, inconsequential. I mean, it could be a difference in limited, but it's still worth it because a hand refill, especially because black is the life gain color. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably okay. Uh, it's like your fourth is or a number three, number three or four, three or four, something like that. Oh, there's you got you got a mythic. Who cares? You got a mythic wild card. You're good. Woo. Uh, declared dominance is okay, especially if you have the basilisk, because <laughs> then you yeah. just like send it in and board wipe them. Infernal yeah, reckoning. Wow. Yeah. That's, I can't believe that's the first one you got of that, but I mean it's just an okay card. Well, not really. It's very limited in scope. If Infernal Reckoning was colorless permanent, I mean, A, it would be broken, but B, it would yes. actually probably see play in standard because you could use it to kill Karn, <laughs> which would be awesome. Oh, yeah, that would be crazy, actually. Yeah, one with the machine. There's a 
awful limited card. I mean, unless yeah. you can um, get enough of the five drop uh, artifact creature guys. No, it's just but, not going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> In standard. I mean, you have to have that maybe. artifact deck. Yeah. I mean, we still have, uh, what's it called in the format? The big 12-12 that you can cheat out with. Like the, basically oh, the artifact like, version like, of Galta. Your whole Colossus or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fel Spectre is really good. Eh, yeah. I mean, it makes them discard a card and they lose two life for four mana, so. And it's a 1 3, so it blocks pretty well. Yeah, 1 3 flyer, it's not bad. Oh, there it is. I knew you were going to get a copy of that. <sighs> second copy. Of course. Last pack, boys. Same lightning strike, great. Uh, hey, crash, crash master. master. Not one nickel bolus. I think I nope. jinxed myself. Okay, let's you make it a. <laughs> we're going to make it an even 100 here. Hundred packs, boys. Got it. That's a clickbaity title for YouTube. Can't wait. Oh, I should have said hundred. I think I said ninety and everything. Oh, for YouTube, no, that's yeah. fine. For YouTube, it's gonna be just yeah. clickbait central. Uh, that's a good limited pack. Exclusion yeah, mage. Plague Exclusion mage is just awesome. I mean, this man of war. Yeah. <laughs> man of war is it's, always. It's, in... it's, just, it's just good. That's another really good limited card. I mean, five mm -hmm. mana draw two cards late game is awesome. Yep. And then it just gives you a 2 1 body if you want to just get in early. Yep. Uh, Phylactery Lich, lame. <laughs> Although, yeah. in your blue black artifact deck, not as bad, but still probably not playable. I'm going to test it now, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, the three black is kind of annoying, but. Yeah, that's a. I mean, there's a lot of really good blue black hey. dual lands, though, so you're. In decent shape there because you got fetid pools and uh, submerged boneyard and uh, yep, drowned catacomb. You see, on arena, they give you uh, all of the common dual lands for free. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, cleansing nova, third copy, I think. Yep, saves me having to craft them at least. Yep, thud. Because I'm probably still gonna play Esper. Uh... Oh my Indians. god, these, now these cards at the end, they might not be stellar guys, but hey, you're, he's getting those uh, wild cards. Isolate, wow, okay. Man. So the cards that you get with your own gold are statistically way worse. Yes, just, you know, <laughs> very, <don't> <laughs> very worse. <laughs> this, is, this is all, this is all just off the cuff kind of statistics. Yeah, Gorklaw. Yeah, Gorklaw number three. Yeah, three is probably about how many I would play. Mm -hmm. Oh, Demon. Demon of Catastrophes, okay. It'd be interesting to see if he does make it into the standard. I mean, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer really... trample for 4 is pretty awesome. That's a really big card. Yeah. It's a very big creature, and just sustaining one creature might not be so bad. Yeah, <clears> obviously <throat> limited. I mean, it could this go with that Demon bomb, deck, to but... be honest. I mean, it could go with that uh, the Zombie deck, to be honest. Yeah. Just throw something in the graveyard, still get a 2-2. Two -two. Okay, so we got to 130.3% still on the... Uh, That's really not bad. So basically you get an extra packs. vault open for opening 90 packs, pretty much. Go up and see how many wild cards you got real quick. Let me take a look. 13, 131 20. commons. 100, <clears throat> you have four uncommons and commons? How is that even possible? Eh, I probably crafted a few commons, <laughs> but yeah. that is but. ridiculous. I mean, 13 Mythic Rares, 28 Rares. 28 Rares is basically what you would see in a lot of standard decks. Like, 28 Rare cards. So, and you, obviously he gets the ones that he already has that he naturally opens. So, I don't know. How do you feel about spending the 100 bucks? Well, give or take. Not great since I didn't open Nickel Bolas, but... <laughs> yeah! Um, you know, not the worst. I mean... Basically, what you're looking at in Arena is you pay 100 bucks, you get to make a top tier standard deck for sure. Like you get to make at least one tier one standard deck. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you'll have the you'll have the resources, and then you'll have a couple. Le you'll probably have enough resources afterwards to make a, you know a not heavy rare kind of deck that's kind of like bits and pieces of a good deck. Um, at least in my experience, that's what I've been able to do. Because there are a couple top tier decks that just don't have a lot of super, you know, don't have a lot of mythics, for example. So yeah, I mean, uh, you're maybe building like two tier one decks if you have previous 
cards already from like prior sets and it just depends on how good the sets were because like yeah and remember he's he, when you buy those big bundles you really can't unless you like individually buy them separate or then then you won't get like the uh the bonus bonus cards that come with it the buy a box kind of cards but um if you're all buying from one set you're not going to have the chance to randomly open cards that you need for decks from other sets so always keep that in mind yeah uh it, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out once arena is officially released because yeah i mean in standard like it's just so funny because rares in arena have just such a different value cost associated with them than in paper you know a, a, a rare like i don't know just pull a random rare out of your out of your head it could cost like two dollars uh in paper you know but that rare is going to cost the same as you know a twenty dollar rare on arena because it's all using the same wild card yeah and that makes it feel really really bad when you have to get these uh these rares that are worth like a buck two bucks or whatever in paper for a deck but at the same time you're using the same resource as the craft you know the top tier rares that you need for other decks yeah and you already know what i think on uh, lands <laughs> yeah those lands should just come stock every one of them like you should never have to wait waste a rare wild card on fixing that's insane yeah for sure uh well hopefully things you know shake out by the release we'll have to see what last minute changes they make to things because i mean it's coming up here pretty soon like it is like three months ish i think yeah and who knows if it gets pushed back i i think it would be a really big fail on their part if they didn't release with ravnica though because they could have oh, like yeah. a great new player experience that ties into ravnica and um like, I really want to see the good PvE content as, w as well. You know, something to rival Hearthstone with the brawls and the... Uh... Well, have they already announced that they're doing that? Nope, not yet. But I think it's a positive thing that we've seen the new player they experience. Have, they're going to do it. They're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to go to bed, guys. I'm already way past my bedtime. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> thanks for joining us for the pack opening. If you guys are watching on YouTube... Uh, Make sure to follow us on Twitch because we've been streaming a lot more lately. Um, yep. As Arena gets more pop popular with you guys, we're going to be playing a lot more. We're going to be building some of these uh, decks with Mike in the coming in the coming weeks. So definitely go over to our Twitch channel or twitch.tv. Give us a follow so you get notified exactly when we go live. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, if you're watching on YouTube, give it a like, share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so you can watch all the content as we're coming into mainline m19 lore stuff so this is going to be a lot of exciting things for you guys to watch and then uh make sure and check out our patreon uh, it's uh patreon.com slash aetherhub uh, there you can support us however you can obviously not everybody can you know give a ton but if you can throw us a buck you know anything helps uh yeah, we spend pretty much all of our free time making content trust me <laughs> yep. and, and guys even even at one dollar you guys gain access to a lot of fun stuff you know videos go up early voting all this kind of stuff so yeah. there's just a lot of great stuff uh at a community level for you guys to enjoy i've yeah, been on the discord you can chat with me and Sybin, and <coughs> as well as uh, bad wolf mtg and nitsa hone show up on there quite often and we have some fun conversations so join us yep yeah. all right guys i'll see you next time yeah